welcome my friends to the video today we're going to build a new pc here we have the components we have a gigabyte geforce rtx 2070 and asus x 570f motherboard which uh, they do in e as well but the only difference is that f doesn't have the wi-fi uh, i don't need wi-fi because i use ethernet for stability as streamer and then we have some rog peripherals here the mouse the mouse the mouse the gladius 2 core and then the strix scope which uh, full disclosure rog did send me the motherboard and the keyboard so we're going to start off by taking out the rog strix motherboard here the x570 f all nicely wrapped up in here the extra gentle anti-static bag oh are these stickers oh look at that Oh, the cool stickers. The board itself has got a nice black matte finish. You see all the massive heat sinks here. And this does have Aura Sync RGB as well, uh, fully customizable, of course. And this does feel like quality, a quality bit of kit and loads of heat sinks. Now, where is, am I missing something? Where's the M2 drive things? Can you see them? See the socket there? Yeah, so we need to take this, this that, heat sink. That is probably the heat sink for the M.2s, I bet. I would imagine so, yeah. There might be pads on the back. So heat sinks here for the M.2s, a couple of screws to take this off, whack the M.2s in. Okay, so we got one of the crucial MX500 M.2s in after we took the shroud off. And uh, I totally didn't do that just so we didn't mess up on camera. And we're going to put the second one in, in here, which is the one terabyte. So that's primary, which is our boot drive. And then we're going to put this one in on our secondary, which is just there for our storage and games. Let me just pop this little mount in though which goes just in this little screw hole here if we can get it in there there we go and then your m2 there's only one way they can really go in I'll just put my hand there to hold the board in place while i push a little bit it'll just slide in nicely like that and then when you push it down there's a nice little screw hole there for another little screw that will hold it in place and again just slightly pinch tight doesn't have to be done up tight at all and let's see if i can get this screw in without shaking everywhere and gouging a big hole in this X570. So we're going to remove these pads here and then stick these back into place if I can remember which way these go. Just like that. Make sure we sit them in their correct locations. I think that's that's totally not it. So there we go. That's pretty cool. That's quite cool. Yeah, that's pretty cool. That's got a a fan in there and the heat sinks for the M2s. I did not expect that. To keep them, uh, just help a little bit with cool in there. Okay, we got should have our cooler in there as well. Let's just pop that there for a second. And our cool, that's a bit weighty, that is. Bloody hell. All to cool our tiny little Ryzen. That's bigger than I thought and heavier than I thought. I wondered why the box was so heavy. But that is a big chunk of aluminium there. And there's only one way this should go. And you match it up by, there's a little little uh, marking on the corner there, an arrow. And you'll see it underneath as well. Little um, arrow there. I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but there's also one on the socket here on the motherboard where the CPU goes. And it should just drop in. But obviously, don't literally drop it in. Uh, set it over where it should go. And there we go. It's sat in nicely there. Then you push down. Oh, then we push down this arm. Make sure it clicks underneath. And that is it. CPU is in. And you just got to get your cooler on which will mount via these brackets on the side here, either side of your CPU. So now we're going to put in the 2070 Super by Gigabyte. We've removed our blanking plates. We're just going to slot this in the PCI Express slot. Just here, it needs two blanking slots taken out, one for the sockets, HDMI's and display ports, and one for the extraction vent on the back of the GPU. We hear the clicker as the GPU went down, which uh, lets us know that it's in place. And we just got to put these screws back in from the blanking plates to secure the GPU in place. Once our GPU is in place, we have our power sockets here. So we want to see, because we did some cable management, if we've got enough slack to play with here to get both of these plugged in. We need a four pin, uh, six pin, sorry, and an eight pin, which uh, we've got here, but will they reach? That's the thing. We may have to tinker with our cable management. As you can see, it's very clear. There's no cables in sight, really inside the case the the nzxt h500 does a really good job with cable management um we just uh, we're struggling for length keeping everything tidy as well so i thought as we're doing a full upgrade new pc and everything like that and we've got a new keyboard might as well do a new mouse as well this has been compared um physically to the 
uh, death adder, razor death adder. So we can see the the design there is uh, is quite death adderish, to be honest. It's quite a nice feel. It does feel a little bit weighty compared to the G Pro that I'm used to. I um, don't know if it's because it's new, but it's a bit bit slippy as well. Not much grip. I do like a bit of grip on my mice. Uh, mouse wheel's nice and thick. Clicky. We've got a DPS button there. We've got two side buttons. They're a bit clicky. A bit clicky, but if we're using the RTX voice, we shouldn't hear that anyway. Um, it's got some nice laser cut patterns on the sides and the uh, Republic of Gamers logo on the side there. All laser cut in. We've got some extra peelies on the side on the bottom there and you got your feet Now, one thing with this is you can change out the switches just by popping these rubbers out the bottom here around the laser and you can put new switches in underneath your two mouse buttons there if you don't like those switches so uh i'll be happy with that as it is though but that's the mouse anyway that it does look nice and it does i could play with that that's quite nice to because i've got big hands i've got big hands so that feels that does feel quite nice it probably feel better when the cable's all completely out because it feels a bit weird where i'm still using it and I'm not in a mouse mat we're on this table so it probably feel better hey it feels better on that box actually yeah that's like 10 times better just on that box okay yeah I'm, I'm quite happy with that to be honest oh we have a mouse mat a mouse mat has entered yeah much better on a mouse mat that's smooth. Uh, yeah, it's got it's got the aura sync as well. Says on the box there. So that's the mouse anyway. That is pretty nice, pretty nice. But this is the big one. This is the big one for me. The keyboard. I do like a nice keyboard, and I wear keyboards out very quick. The WASD it, it goes very quick for me. Um, they just the letters are gone. Um, but this one is again aura sync and Cherry MX keys. So they're going to be a bit clicky. But if I end up using the RTX voice, that won't be a problem anyway. We turn that round so you guys can see. Got the outer box off, and there's another box, so we can lift that open. And it's in a nice kind of cloth wrap here. So we can pull that off, and there we go. There's the keyboard. It's um, it's kind of small. It's thin around the edges. It's not got much of a bezel, and not a much, uh, you know, it's not large around the outside. We've got Republic of Gamers there down on the uh, where your wrist would be. Keys aren't too loud, actually. They're not as loud as I thought. They're not too loud, actually. They're not clicky. It's just, yeah, that does feel nice. So, of course, with these, I believe it's more responsiveness uh, on the keys and things like that for gaming. Um, that looks actually really nice. And, yeah, I think it's aluminium. It looks like brushed aluminium. Would you say that's brushed aluminium? What well, this is all made of, the actual all, all the housing. And on the bottom, again, we've got the laser cut pattern, similar to the mouse and the ROG logo there under a, another protective coat in and you have your legs as usual you and higher it and lower it and a braided cable of course just like the mouse some people don't like braided cables but I, I quite like them see the length uh, I have my PC up on the desk anyway so it's not too much of a bother for me but for you guys that are maybe interested in picking up a new mouse uh, mouse cable is not too bad as well it's it's a good lengthy mouse now we have to wire everything up. Uh, we've got a spare 4K telly, and we'll wire this up, see if it'll post, see if it'll boot, get in the BIOS, check these all work and all light up nicely. We'll get some close-ups for you, ladies and gentlemen, and get it into Windows 10. Kind of sync to the... Oh, there we go, we are in the BIOS. Okay, yeah, um, we can see the keyboard here as well. Now, the good thing is, what I do like with ROG uh, stuff is the quality now, of course, this is, this is quite weighty. Uh, we can see there's a different pattern, pattern as well. There's like a aluminium there and then a brushed aluminium effect this side. Even the ROG logo lights up with the RGB. You can do a different styles of lighting. You can do this rainbow effect, the sweeping effect, pulsing effect, or a static one color, the same as the mouse as well, which is uh, the same colors, I believe, but uh, just pulses on the logo and the mouse wheel there. So I'm impressed with that. Good quality. Yes, you pay a bit more premium for Republic of Gamers, but they are good quality. And like I said, you get you, you get what you pay for. Um, I quite like their stuff. I've spent a lot of time hanging around their booths at EGX and things like that, game conventions. Always impressed. Uh, hopefully one day pick up one of their monitors uh, because I used one and it impressed me. I believe 1500 megahertz, which is half of the 3000, will get you the, I believe, will get you the best performance um, but we can do tests like i've said it's not going to break anything 
if uh, anything will happen, it will be a quick shutdown for a safety procedure to uh, avoid damage. But um, that should be good. I think that's about right for the AMD to get maximum performance. Make sure the DOCP is enabled, which is the equivalent of the Intel XMP profile for your memory to run at full speed. And then Windows 10 from USB shouldn't take too long. Windows 10 from USB takes uh, not very long at all. Um, we get that installed and we will install some games. We did have some issues with the DOCP enabled, getting a full 3000 megahertz. Apparently AMD is very finicky with the memory kits that it does use and be fully compatible with. So I think I've got the uh, the ones that probably aren't supported that well with the new AMD architecture or the chipset, uh, which is the T-Force Vulkan memory, 16 gigabyte DDR4 at 3000 megahertz. Maybe I'll have to in the future get another memory kit, but it is running stable with the OCP off. We've done some test renders, which is about half the speed of my old PC, the 4790K and the 1070. We've knocked about, yeah, definitely half the speed off with any render we put through it. And streaming, it whacks out 1080p, 60 FPS with no sweat on Battlefield 5 maximum settings. I'll put that on the screen now for you. Check that out with FPS on the screen. So yeah, it's a native 1080p 60. Solid all around the board, no drop frames. Solid connection. Killed someone. Maxed out Ultra BF5, RTX on. Closing in on 100 FPS constant in Conquest. Not a single stutter, not a single uh, FPS flicker or anything like that that I used to get. And as you remember, 720p Olive, you know, 720p 30, if I pushed it even to 60, it would die. My old PC, this is just eating it up for dinner. This is just... Chewing it up and spinning it out like nothing. Not even breaking a sweat. Not even breaking a sweat. CPU at 7%. Not a single drop frame. Of course, we can't build an ultimate PUBG, super beast, hyper beast, next generation PC without testing PUBG itself. We've jumped in Vikendi here, which I hear is the most FPS impacting map for PUBG. And, uh, well, you just uh, the numbers speak for itself, really. Not only does it run this smooth with a constant FPS, we know it's no FPS stutter, no micro stutters, nothing. I don't know if you ever get it where you feel like you're at 60 FPS or it should be at 60 FPS, but it feels more like 20 FPS and stuff like that with your micro stutters and weird things going on. Zero of that here. Absolutely zero. I didn't notice a single stutter. And not only that, the load time's instant. PUBG on my old PC used to take a good minute to load into just the splash screen, the first splash screen. This is just bam, straight in. As soon as I click go, bam, in. As soon as I click exit, bam, it's on the desktop, ready to go again with something else. I am super impressed. Of course, we have more games to test though. What kind of person would I be if I didn't cover Daisy on my channel and its performance? We went to Cherno, which I think is the most CPU and FPS intensive area in the whole of Chernogorsk. And well, the FPS was amazing. And again, zero micro stutter or anything like that. It, it just ran so smooth and looked even better to me but i don't know if that's right because i used to run it max settings before but uh yeah i definitely got stutters and loads of micro stutters before whereas now it's just so smooth and constant but it's, it's just night and day really so we're going to check out another one of my favorite games escape from tarkov in 4k maximum settings here we are on interchange just approaching the supermarket here and the fps again is a decent amount but it's super smooth and that's the important thing when you get those hitches those fps spikes and that can really mean life or death when in that wrong moment you get a bit of a fps hitch when you're trying to aim you guys know what i'm on about and you just die because of that performance and this is just super smooth i tried this on multiple maps and it was either the same as this or even better but of course i don't have a 4k or 1440p monitor i would only be playing this on 1080p which means for me even better performance in tarkov and finally today we can't really benchmark a new pc a new build without testing out shadow of the tomb raider seems to be a go-to for many people on how this looks and performs with RTX 12, RTX and DLSS enabled, and we should be pretty much full settings all around other than motion blur. And there is actually a benchmark with this, so let's run it and find out. But here we go, pushing over 100 FPS maxed out RTX plus DLSS, which can double your FPS if you're struggling using the AI's algorithm to upscale a lower resolution. Nothing wrong with that, though. 
Nothing wrong with that at all. And damn, this is a good looking game. I've not played this one yet. I'll have to play it. But I'll finish off the video here. Again, I just want to say a huge thank you to Overclockers UK for helping me get the CPU and graphics card sorted. A massive thank you to Asus Republic of Gamers for supplying me with the Strix X570F motherboard. Amazing motherboard. And the Strix Scope mechanical keyboard with the Cherry MX. I am very impressed with the keyboard and the mouse. In fact, a huge thank you for those guys. And hopefully we can get some more things to cover for you guys in the future. Let me know if there's anything you're particularly interested in, and we'll see what we can do. As I am partnered with Republica Gamers, as I've mentioned, and uh, very proud to be a part of, of what they're doing. And of course, I can't do any kind of video like this without a massive thank you to you, the community. Without you guys, I wouldn't be here to start with. And of course, we raised a lot of money last year to get me rolling with this, and we're finally there. So I, I'm eternally grateful to, to everybody in the community that's, that's you know, just amazing support <laughs> to get me to here. Just that I can't explain it well enough, but you know, I can't do it justice. I, I just, it really means a lot and it, it's just eternally grateful and I could never repay you. So uh, let's just keep going as we are, keep going strong and growing and uh, our time will come. Let me tell you about it. But for now, we can just deliver the best possible quality content and streams than we ever could before. I hope you enjoyed the video. Leave any comments below if you have any information or any uh, tips and tricks for me on the new build. Don't forget to subscribe if you enjoy the content I create and you want to see more. Remember, I love you all, and I'll see you peeps next time. Damn, that looked good. Over 100 FPS as well. I am impressed.